Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to learn how to set up a global header and footer. So here's the home page we set up in our previous lesson. Now on most websites we want some sort of header area that will appear on every page on our site. Same with the footer. That's why usually you'll go to websites and they have global headers and footers that show up on usually every page unless there's some sort of exception where they don't want the header or footer shown or they want a different header or footer. So to do something like this your first instinct might be to go into your index.php and just add some code at the top and at the bottom. So you might think we can do something like this and at the bottom we can do something like and then we would go back refresh and this works but we would have to do this for every page for our site, but we know from our last lesson that index.php doesn't power every single page. So, for example, if we click one of our blog posts, we lose our header and footer since this page is powered by single.php, which is different than index. And then we also have page.php. So long story short, if we want this header and footer on every page, we would have to duplicate that code into multiple template files. So duplicating code usually is bad practice because if in the future we want to change something in the header or footer, we're going to have to make that change in every file. And we don't want to do that. So instead, we want our header and footer to live in their own single individual files where we can make those changes and they will reflect everywhere. So let me show you what I mean. The first thing we want to create a new file in our theme and we're going to name that header.php and in this new file let's write some dummy text. Save it. Go back into index. Let's delete this that we did a few moments ago and instead let's enter into PHP mode and call the WordPress function named get header semicolon. So we could close out of PHP here, but because we're going to drop back into PHP, why don't we just get rid of the closing tag and even the opening tag. That way we just stay in PHP mode. So this get header function will pull in the contents of header.php. So if we save this, refresh, let's not forget the question mark here. So let's refresh the home page. And we do see hello from header.php. Next, let's do the same thing for our footer. So create a new file, name it footer.php. And we could do something like save it, go back into index. So let's replace this down here with code that will dynamically pull in our footer. So we could drop into PHP mode down here, or we could just write it appear while we're still in PHP. You could probably guess the function we're going to use. Get footer, save it, go back, refresh, and we do see that. So let's check out one of our posts and we see that they're not there. So all we need to do within here is call our get header and get footer functions within the single.php file and within the page.php file. Let's do that now. So before our while loop, let's say get header. Then after the curly brace that closes the while loop, let's call get footer. Now individual pages. So page.php, if you guys remember from the last lesson, powers our pages. So we'll do the same. Above the while loop, we'll do get header. And then get footer. And let's check out a page real quick. We do get our hello from header and greetings from footer. Now any changes that we make within our header or footer file, those will reflect on our index, single blog post, and our pages. So before we bring this lesson to a close, there's two more tasks we need to accomplish. First, let's find out how to load our CSS file on the front end of our website. And after that, we'll learn how to add the black admin menu bar that's supposed to sit at the top of our website globally. The bar I'm referring to is here at the top of our admin dashboard. 
So this should be showing in the front end of our website if we're logged in. So the first task is loading that CSS file on the front end of our website. So if you've been working with HTML in the past, then you might know how to load a CSS file. You include it at the top of our HTML file in the head section. So let's open the header, delete the dummy text, and start fresh. So we usually always begin with our doc type. So usually the head section is where we'll load our CSS file. So with WordPress, instead of using the link tag, we're going to use a PHP tag. This will allow WordPress to be in control of our head section. So imagine if down the road we download some WordPress plugins and those will need to download CSS files of their own. This will allow WordPress to control to load the proper CSS files. Now with this line of code in place, all we need to do is programmatically tell WordPress to load our CSS file. And how do we do that? We create a brand new file in our theme folder and we'll name it functions.php. Now the new functions file is a bit different than all our other files. All the other files are what you might call template files. They control the HTML the general public's going to see. So think of this functions.php file as something more private like a behind the scenes file. It's where we can tell WordPress actions that we want it to do. So within here, we're going to open up PHP and then call WordPress function that is called add action. It's a great WordPress function that we will use in the future. The function wants us to give it two arguments. For example, quotes, comma, quotes. So these are just placeholders for now but we're going to give it two arguments. These are instructions that we're going to tell the function so it knows what to do. The first argument tells WordPress what kind of instructions we're giving it. So the first is going to be a WordPress hook that we're going to hook onto. WP and Q scripts. This is our way of saying, hey WordPress, I want to load some CSS or JavaScript files. In the second argument, we're going to give WordPress a function we want to run. It's important to point out this is a function that we're going to define in a few seconds from now. So let's make this up and we'll create it in a few seconds. Uni University Files. So this doesn't really matter as long as it's something meaningful that you'll remember and is easy to understand. Don't forget the quotes. And then we're going to create that function above here. So within here, we're going to call a WordPress function. So within the parentheses of WP in Q style, this function is looking for two arguments. For the first, we're going to make up a nickname for our main style sheet. It doesn't matter. It just needs to make sense to you. And then the second argument is the location that points towards that file. In the future, we'll learn how to point to custom folder directories. But in this case, since we just want to work with the main style.css file right here, we don't need to manually spell out a location. We can just call the WordPress function named. If we wanted to include a second or third CSS file, we could duplicate this line here. If we wanted to load a JavaScript file, we would just switch this word style to script. But don't worry too much about that since we'll learn how to add our own JavaScript files very soon. So for now, if we save this file, also make sure to save any other changes. Then we refresh in the browser. We do see our text is green, which if we go back over here to our style, which we wrote in an earlier lesson, we did change our paragraphs to green. So now we know we could do one more test. And we do see those changes. So now our CSS file is loading. So before moving on to the last part of the lesson, which is adding that admin bar, let's just go over this functions.php. So all we did was define a brand new function that we chose the name of. We got to make that name up. It didn't matter. Within that function, we called a WordPress function that pointed to our CSS file that we wanted to load. And remember, when you create the function, it doesn't actually run it. Something needs to call that function later on. And that's exactly what we're doing here with the add action. 
WordPress has this function add action. We give it two arguments, and the second argument is the name of a function we want WordPress to call at a specific moment. And the first argument is when that moment should be. Since WordPress has a lot of moments we could hook onto, this line of code allows us to add our style sheet right before it outputs the code that's going to go into our header. So right before we load our head, this will hook onto that and point to our style sheet. So let's move on to our last task of adding the black admin bar to the top of our site globally when we're logged in as admin. To begin, let's jump into header.php. And what I want to do is move the closing body in HTML out of this file and into footer.php. If it doesn't make sense, it's okay. Just follow along. Then save it. So let me give you a frame of reference so we know what's going on. In our index.php, first we include our header.php, then we output the body of the page, and then the footer of the page. So back in header. We don't want to close out the body and HTML within this file. We want to do it at the very end of the HTML that gets generated. So over in footer, it makes sense to close out our body in HTML, since this would be the bottom of our HTML page. So right before the closing tags, let's drop into PHP, WP footer. So if you've ever worked with JavaScript, a lot of times we don't want to load JavaScript files up in the head. We want to load them right before the closing body tag. That way if there's heavy loading at the end, the visuals of your site have already loaded. So this is our way of giving WordPress the final say before we close out the body tag. So WordPress can use this for all sorts of things like loading JavaScript files, or in this case, adding that black admin bar to the top of our page. So let's save this, refresh, and now we got our admin bar. So that right there is gonna bring our lesson to a close. And right now you might be thinking, when are we gonna get to nicer templates more professional, modern looking website as opposed to this 90s looking page. So in the next lesson, that's what we're going to focus on. If you found value in this or any of my videos, make sure to like and subscribe so I could continue making content like this for you. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.